All right, now that we've got our two walls done, uh, we're going to go ahead and work on our door. So what you're going to do instead of, so to make this user friendly, instead of 45ing and making this uh, a tight joint, I'm going to teach you how to uh, drill and tap at a, or drill and countersink at an angle uh, using a little jig. All this is is a piece of wood with holes in it and you're going to screw it onto your wood like this so that it uh, it holds it in place. Now you could do this with clamps or a couple other ways, but what you're going to do, this is just simple and easy. Bust that out. And I'll go ahead and drill an extra hole so you can see this. Now I'm going to put my countersink in. And I'm going to start at a square angle to the wood right here. Now, once I've hit this point, right, at the end of the bevel, right there, then I'm going to turn at an angle like this and drill in. Now, what that does is it gives me an angled countersink, so then I can go like this. and angle in my screw. What it ends up looking like is this right here. So now that I've got this braced without a clamp or anything, I just screw my screw in. And that sucks up nice and tight. Now you're going to do one on each side. And then pop the bit or the jig off. And repeat this on all four corners. We've built our door, and this is going to be the face of the structure. Uh, it's relatively square compared to how warped our wood is. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one of our sides here, and we're going to temporarily screw the door to the frame so that we can hold it together. Just going to put two screws in each side. One there. And I'm going to go ahead and square it to the door itself. Whether the door is square or not doesn't matter. We're just going to make it as square as we can. Okay, so now we're standing. And I'll put our other two screws in here. All right, next we're going to add in a couple of pieces on the back here. So we've cut these to fit right in to the back there. So it will give us some more structural support when we're uh, putting our siding pieces on. So I'm going to go ahead and screw these in. And we went ahead and uh, drilled and uh, countersunk these so that the screws wouldn't be in the way when we put our siding on. And I cannot stress the importance of countersinking and pre-drilling enough for this. 
This wood is so dry, it will just split right apart. So I screwed one of the back ribs in, screw this other one in here, and notice how I'm using this on the inside and this is my flush side. Uh, this doesn't make any difference, uh, but this obviously does. So, right there. Do the bottom so it's square. And we'll go ahead and spin this around for you so you can see what I just did. All we're doing is adding in these ribs here so that we have space enough to screw our facing on coming across. And it also gives bracing when we put in our cross parts. So our next pieces are our cross members right here. Now, before we put our cross members in, I'm gonna show you how we got our angles on the top of our wood. It's very simple. Pick a relatively straight board, put it on the wood right here, and draw a line on the top of these boards. So once we have our lines across right here, there and there, come along with your skill saw and cut it off. That'll give you your angle so that your boards have something angled across the top. Well, why would we want an angled roof? Well, so it slopes rain off of it. That way, this will last longer. Let's put our part in. I'm going to go ahead and put a screw on both sides of this so that I don't have to balance it for very long. Set that in there. <laughs> there we go, right there. There. And there. I'm going to put a couple more screws in so it's nice and secure. And do the same thing to the front. All right, so now that we've put the cross member in the front, just like we did in the back, the frame is basically done. So what we're going to do next is we're going to put our siding on. So we're going to start in the back with our siding. Uh, as you can see, we don't have a cross member across the bottom, and we have one across the top. So we just want to make sure that our measurement is accurate with our back piece. So And this is where we're going to start using the little screws. Now, we've just drilled a hole in each end about two inches, two and a half inches in, so that we have a space to hit directly in. Right there. The first board will square us up, and then we're just going to repeat this all the way up and try and stay as square as we can going up.
All right, so we're done with the frame and we've put on about 90, well, 80% of the siding. We still have to do the door. Now, on the cuts list, there's a couple of different sizes of wood. The left side is longer than the right side. And the reason why is because on the left side, you're coming out flush to the edge of the door. On the right side, we're only coming to the rim of the door so that we can put hinges on and the door won't hang up. It'll open all the way. If we were to come out further, we wouldn't be able to open the door. So next step, taking the screws out of the door and putting hinges on. So we've got these little hinges. They're just a couple of bucks at a local hardware store. Nothing special. Uh, they don't have to be very big because this isn't a very heavy door. All right, so we want our hinge, the outside of our hinge to hinge right at the border of this piece of wood because we're going to attach it to this piece of wood. And you wanna get it as square as you possibly can uh, because you're gonna put two hinges on it and if they're off a little bit, then, then the door doesn't close exactly right. So take your time putting your hinges on. Out of all of the things that you do slowly or do right, this is one of the things that's important to do slow and right. Now, let's go ahead and put our door on. Now, the key to putting the door on so that it swings nicely and doesn't drag on the ground is giving it some space. So, just take a couple of boards, rest the door on top of the boards, Slide your door into place and screw your screws in. All right, so now that we've got their door hung, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do our angled pieces on the side. And then we're gonna do the roof, angled pieces, and the front door. So let's go ahead and get started on that. Let's put our roof on, and it's real simple. Now, on the roof, if you notice, we've got a little overhang. You want overhang on the front door because this is where you're, you're gonna have a little bit of a gap here at the top. We don't want rain coming down. Now our piece of metal overhangs about six inches on both sides, which is good. Uh, it'll shield this front and back. You may want to add more structure to this or paint the sides so that it doesn't weather too bad. So we'll go ahead and add in the roof. Okay, so now that we've put on the roof, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna find this angle right here. And this is very, very simple. We're just gonna take a board. We're gonna set it in place here. And we're going to go from the inside with a marker. We're going to follow the line of the roof and draw our angle. That's our new cut line right there. So once we have this cut line, then we can take this small piece that's left over and add it in here, draw the line again, and cut it again. What it turns out looking like is that and that. We'll screw these in place and then we'll do the other side. <laughs> 